Also remember today in the market uh, we'll be focusing on orthopedic care. Uh, it's all about trauma and emergency care as well. We can couple all that together. And we have our doctors here who can also comment on whether this particular move is, uh, uh, of course, uh, viable. Should we take back this function to the national government? Allow me to introduce to you today Dr. Peter Kamau Njeroge, who's a consultant orthopedic surgeon. Also, we do have with us as well Dr. Richard Bwana Ombachi, consultant spine surgeon. Also, we have with us Dr. Francis Mbugwa, orthopedic and sports medicine uh, expert. Also, we have with us as well Bernard Oteno, who's a consultant physiotherapist as well. Good morning, guys. Oh, right. Let's just begin from uh, that particular story that uh, maybe also act as a segue to a discussion uh, on the broader issues that we'll be discussing this morning as far as orthopedic uh, care is concerned in the country. But do you think this function should actually go back to the national government? And what is uh, uh, happening? Has it, not, has it not really fallen or shaken into place with the counties? What is uh, some of the kinks and the wrinkles that needs to be ironed out that maybe you've learned that truly uh, the national or the county government cannot really handle healthcare. Let's begin with you, uh, Dr. Njeroge. Um, Dibal, I think um, this issue is a big issue. It's a big issue. First of all, I think we need to understand that medicine is a very complex thing. Healthcare is not something very simple. And I think what happened is that mm -hmm. the devolution of healthcare was done too quickly before the counties could actually adapt to it. Yes. I think they lack the, the capacity uh, and the right maybe human resource to be able to coordinate this thing from the county level. I think and I support that this thing should actually go back, be done centrally like it was before. It's easier. It's going to, to actually be able to be monitored and managed better. And eventually, if we are to devolve it again, it will be done in a stepwise manner without having all the bumps and wrinkles that we faced because right. things are not going well in the counties. Right, bumps and wrinkles. So we can actually try and explore a bit the bumps and the wrinkles that maybe you need to kink out. You can mention one or two before we move on to uh, Dr. Mbaji. I, I think that, that one of the main things is that uh, actually, um, let's take something like specialized care, for instance, and the fact that the people who are at the county level Maybe managing at the maybe Minister of Health at the county level without uh, appearing to uh, diminish anybody's competence. Yes. I think some of the details that are required to understand, to be able to facilitate some of these things to go on are lacking. And I think it's because many counties didn't have actually the requisite personnel to actually be able to sit and manage this thing and understand it in its depth and entirety. I think we grabbed it too quickly. So what you find is that sometimes you have doctors fleeing from the counties, mm -hmm. not because they hate working at the counties, but the conditions are terrible. I mean, we've had instances where uh, people in the county assemblies could just walk into a ward and hire as a senior doctor mm -hmm. without actually understanding the nitty gritties of the workings, inner workings, and the complexity of the issues yes. therein. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's one of the big bumps, mm -hmm. and maybe Dr. Mbachi could add a few more. All right, uh, Dr. Mbachi, I think one of the kings as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Kamau, I think, has put it quite well. The devolution actually came in too fast, and it didn't give uh, people in the counties time to be able to internalize and know what this is about. Really, medicine is a complex issue, even uh, within the people who understand medicine, uh, there are still issues which they need to be advised at a very high level. So if you find now you are devolving this to uh, somebody who maybe has never had any uh, contact with the health sector, but because he is simply uh, the kingpin at the county, it becomes actually very difficult to run these services. But however, having said that, I think it should be a hybrid whereby we have the policy uh, the financing uh, being handled at the central level but in terms of the personnel because that is actually quite a very important issue in management of health issues that should also be uh, taken care of at the county level so to me it's a hybrid that is I will suggest will work all right let's hear from uh, as well uh, Barra I just like um, Dr. Kamau and Dr. Mbachi have put it uh, the health management mostly in the line of the physiotherapist. Yes. Um, I think I would suggest if it could be back to the national government because the counties have not been quite ready to handle this. Having said that, we have the Physiotherapy Council of Kenya that uh, is working on some policies to see how different counties can be able to 
put all this together. The problem is that every country get run on its own um, merits or its own, its own policies mm -hmm. on health. So that makes it a little bit different. But if it could be put up like it was uh, from the national level, I think that would make physiotherapy better. All right. Yeah. Uh, from uh, sports medicine, uh, I think also the, uh, we should take something from, uh, from uh, Baringo, you know, the Kalenjin the counties as well, who are runners. Yeah, maybe they should handle their sports medicine yeah, from the county level. What do you think? I think I think my colleagues here have handled it pretty good. I think what what is what is the what is going on is every county has its priorities. Every governor has their priority. Every county assembly has their priorities, and you'll find that unfortunately, health may not necessarily have had the the bigger chunk in yes. in in allocation with with regard to that. So you find infrastructure in the counties which has never been developed for so many years. Now all of a sudden you won't that particular uh, scenario to handle the comp most complex of cases, whether it's complex specialist care, whether it's complex sports medicine cases, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So I think it probably should have happened in phases, uh, in a case where, I mean, the national government has been doing this for years, mm -hmm. and allocating doctors and, and, yes. and, and resources mm -hmm. and all that. I think we are requiring the county hospitals and what we're calling them now county referral hospitals to do more to bite more than actually they can they can handle at the moment all right so i think it should have been done in phases we we do not say that in in, in its entirety that it should be completely scrapped because we have gone the, devol the way of devolution but it should have been done in phases in a more organized manner mm -hmm. rather than all at once and it's uh, and, and and it's all I mean, disorganized. Right. So yeah. m maybe that also could have been uh, one of the tripping wires. We just did uh, everything in one f uh, fell swoop. They should have truncated this uh, maybe in faces as uh, the way uh, Dr. Mugo is saying. I don't know what you think, Dr. Njoroge. I think um, just like we have the Teacher Service Commission, mm -hmm. I think it was a tragedy that the, the Health Management I mean, uh, Service Commission was not, uh, you know, uh, given the mandate or rather, it doesn't exist actually. Yes. I wish it, it would have actually been put in place and given the mandate. Mm -hmm. Because the issue is complex. I think without appearing to, to be complicated, the issue is that healthcare, mm -hmm. in, is you read in the Bible that uh, human beings, a human being is wonderfully and fearfully made. Mm -hmm. And these are the people in charge of actually taking care of that wonderfully and fearfully made creature. Yes. And yet many of the policies done and many of the things done don't involve these people. Maybe doctors have been so busy minding their work and not really participating at the, in the political aspect of things. Yes. And I think it's high time that we were actually given uh, the opportunity to actually advise the, the powers that be on how to do some of these things. Because it's a dream of every doctor to see every Kenyan better if that could be achieved. Yes. And I think that's the essence of our training. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot needs to be done. I know there's been some bit of flack here and there because of the strikes and everything. Yes. But I think the goodwill of the doctor should not be understated. And I think if they're involved adequately, they can actually really give a wealth of, of, of knowledge and information on how to run this thing. And I think we'll have a better Kenya at the end of that. All right, talking about uh, fearfully and wonderfully being made, we can see the ingenuity of God himself. And you have paraphernalia on all the, uh, of course, uh, days are there. You can tell us more about what this is all about. Uh, the vertebrae it takes me back to my you know, biology class. Uh, why are we having this here in, in, the, in the studio today? Well, we could start orthopedics. That's the subject of today. Yes. It's about, I know we are called bone doctors, but I think that summarizes and makes it just too narrow. It's just not about bones. The bone is a skeleton. It's what yes. holds you. It's, it's a pillar on which you're mounted. But you have the skeleton, you have the joints, mm -hmm. Then you have the muscles that move the joints, and you have the nerves that actually trigger the muscles. So it's, orthopedics is about bones, joints, muscles, and the nerves that do that. Put that in one aspect, in perspective, and, and see what it is. So as you can see, there's a spine there. All right. Could we have the pelvis. This is the pelvis here. Yeah, could we just uh, zoom into the pelvis? Uh, yes. <laughs> this, this, this and the spine and all this, this paraphernalia so that we can get a closer. This is actually a, a model that we use to train people yes. on how to fix the pelvis. Pelvis is the bone around your waist. It's one of the most important structures and one of the most dangerous structures when injured. Mm -hmm. So here it is, this is the pelvis, and the pelvis joins with the spine. And from there you go from the pelvis onward down to the spine. Mm -hmm. I think Bernard can show the entire spine up to the base of the skull. Yes, Bernard. Mm -hmm. So the pelvis um, is joined to the spine like Dr. Kamawa said, and all the way to, this is part of our skull that is just cut up there. 
and the skull itself is also a bone. So with orthopedics, we cover the whole of that, all the way from the pelvis, the skulls, leaving alone the appendages. We didn't bring in the the hands and the legs also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So essentially, we're having this because we want to demonstrate about orthopedic care and uh, for people who are having, you know, uh, joint issues, arthritis. Uh, we can talk about also issues like uh, Lou Gehrig diseases, uh, which affects uh, muscles as well. There's a, a wide array of things that we can discuss this morning, and we can also get to see uh, also uh, uh, the expertise of the physio physiotherapists as well. Sports medicine is very key, especially in the country, because uh, we. Uh, we are known to be, you know, a very sporting country uh, for the runners as well, but even for the people who are waking up this morning in the gym and they want to know what is a proper, you know, uh, way to train, what are the proper paraphernalia to have, you know, good athletic shoes, you know, uh, good also equipment that you use as well. Maybe you can just give us an inkling on uh, when we talk about sports medicine, uh, what broader aspects should we focus on or where should we streamline also our discussion uh, this morning? So that's, that's, that's good, thank you. So sports, we are a sporting nation, as you've said, yes. and we've, we have been a sporting nation for a very long time. Uh, but the thing that has happened is that we have not, in, in years past, been very keen or be highlighted that what is available with regard to treatment of injuries that we get with sports. So when you play sports, it's inevitable that you're going to get an injury or you're going to get injured. Uh, and what, what has happened is that as the years have gone by, we have advanced significantly in our expertise of treating sports injuries uh, and rehabilitating patients back to sports or mm -hmm. those who have gotten sports injuries. Whether it's rugby, whether it's soccer, whether it's uh, athletics, whether it's basketball, hockey, volleyball, or even Common Mananchi, who has been involved in recreational sports mm -hmm. or gym activities. Yes. They always get injured and you cannot attend to the gym or you've been jogging or running in Karura. A lot of people do that nowadays. And then all of a sudden you have pain and you cannot participate in that for, for a month, for two months. And we're able to advise these patients or people who have got an injury on what to do for rehabilitation so that you can get back to the gym, so that you can get back to sport. Right. And also from the surgical perspective, there are many injuries that they get and now treatment is available. I keep telling people that you do not have to go outside the country nowadays to get your sports injury treated. All, most of these services can be accessed in this country. In the, in the country. Yeah, and you don't have to go abroad to get this treated. Whether it's a surgery, whether it's a rehabilitation, from the rehabilitation standpoint, most of this is actually accessible right now in the country. All right. Yeah. Let's see from uh, Dr. Mbaji. Uh, we have a, a, the spine surgeon yes. and orthopedic surgeon. Yes. You know, for many Kenyans, this mm -hmm. goes way over their head. We cannot mm -hmm. really tell the difference. Uh, maybe okay. you can tell us, uh, w what is the, uh, the difference here? Uh, there's no difference. Actually, a spine surgeon is uh, basically an orthopedic surgeon okay. uh, who are super specialized in uh, spine surgery. Mm -hmm. So as for you to become a spine surgeon, you are either a neurosurgeon or you are an orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Now, after you have done your basic training, then you go now for super specialization uh, in spine surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where you are, will consider now mainly uh, looking at issues that concern the spine. Mm -hmm. But despite that, you are also able to look at other issues. So still the spine surgeon is still an orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so most of the cases that uh, you have actually come across to uh, through your experience, uh, could you maybe give us a high spot of them uh, in the emergencies room uh, that uh, you've observed and you've seen Kenyans uh, truly they are actually suffering from this, or this could be you know some of the emergency care that we really need to take uh, uh, or, or train our focus on. Okay. Now, first of all, it is good to understand that the spine is composed of two components. Uh, this is the skeleton and the soft tissues that yes. actually protect the nervous system. Uh, which is encased in the spine. Mm -hmm. uh, so the most common uh, type of injuries, diseases that we get are actually spinal injuries. The spinal injuries uh, will affect both the skeleton, mm -hmm. which is what we call the vertebral column, mm -hmm. and it will also affect the nervous system that is encased within the vertebral column. Now, the injuries, when severe, they may affect the spinal cord to the extent that actually uh, the patient becomes paralyzed. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the very devastating uh, type of conditions that we do encounter in our emergency uh, departments. Uh, but we also do have commonly people coming in with sprains, which is just uh, minor injuries that may result from uh, sports mm -hmm. or may result from falls. Uh, these may not result necessarily in spinal injuries. They may result in injuries to the skeleton and their treatment may just involve 
uh, confirming that nothing serious has happened and therefore they are just given a uh, pain management and also sent for rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So commonly we have spinal injuries, those are the ones that we commonly find in our emergency rooms, but uh, also we have the sprains and the strains that come from uh, sports and uh, falls from whatever activity mm -hmm. that there may be, or even some industrial accidents. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, industrial accidents, uh, but also most commonly we have people who you know, they sit the whole day in the office mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they have these back pains mm -hmm. and you, they come to you, the specialist, yes. and uh, maybe you, 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 you advise them. Uh, is it the sitting posture or yes. maybe the office ergonomics, you don't have the proper uh, seat as well. I, is this something, maybe Bernard can tell us, because you are actually in the physiotherapy uh, field as well, that it is not truly uh, your spine, but maybe your sitting posture that also is, uh, is affecting your spine. Maybe you can highlight on that, or Dr. Bachi, then we come to uh, Bernard. Yes, uh, spine, spine, uh, the spine, if it is strained, the spine is made of uh, small bones yes. uh, that is separated by some soft tissues. Mm -hmm. to make you can it demonstrate for us uh, so that we, at least we have this paraphernalia, we can uh, make use of them this okay. morning. Yeah, so the spine is made actually of uh, small bones, uh, which is uh, what I'm pointing at here, Yes, uh, that is separated by some soft tissues in between. Which are the discs? This, these soft tissues mm. are what we call the discs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So between the small bones uh, are the soft tissues which are called discs. And this, the purpose of this is actually to make the spine uh, flexible. Otherwise, if it was just one continuous column, it will mean that if somebody twisted you a little, mm -hmm. that will break very easily. Mm -hmm. So these soft tissues between the bones make the spine very flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore uh, prevents any uh, injury from any trivial uh, trauma. Now, the sitting position, or the way we stand, the way we sleep, yes. uh, the way we work, will actually strain uh, these tissues. Mm -hmm. They strain the soft tissues that uh, are on the back, uh, and also sometimes, if very severe, may also strain the bone. This will actually result in patients having back pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, and remember that back pain, uh, where studies have been done, is the second most common reason for people seeking medical advice mm -hmm. uh, in an health unit. Uh, this therefore means that you must take care of your spine, the mm -hmm. way you sit, the way you sleep, the way even the sports, the way you, you, uh, you perform your sports, mm -hmm. that must be well taken care of. Otherwise, you will strain these tissues and some of them may tear off and can actually be a source of very severe pain. So when do you recommend the services of uh, uh, or the physiotherapist? Uh, when a patient comes with back pain, the first thing is to investigate the patient, yes. examine the patient, take a good history, mm -hmm. examine the patient, and see what type of injury the patient has. Yes. Uh, once you find that the patient has an injury that does not require uh, surgery or does not require any form of uh, immobilization, mm -hmm. then that is the time you say that the, tish, the injury is not severe enough okay. uh, for the patient maybe to need surgical services, then you refer the patient to uh, the physiotherapist. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from Bernard. Uh, so they come to you, yes, there you have a patient, uh, then you tell us more about how you also treat the patient. Because we've had also cases where you come to the physiotherapist and you have all this, uh, uh, you know, uh, attendance that you have to do, uh, maybe twice a week or ev uh, every day, uh, why, what really warrants that? Because um, sometimes it can be ex I mean, expensive for, uh, for the patient. Yes, Dibala, I agree with that. Maybe I might pull us back a little bit to posture. Yes. And uh, the body posture is very important mm -hmm. because sometimes people say, I sit for too long. I sit uh, the whole day in the office. But the question is, how do you sit? How do you sit? Because most of the time, we get people who have very good chairs, very good seats at their place of work, or even at home, but the posture in which you sit matters a lot. So we look at the spine the way it is, and uh, the radiologist will take an x-ray and tell you, oh, the spine is in good alignment and everything. Mm -hmm. But then, if any case, this is the best way you should sit and somebody slouches like we all do when resting at home that will keep a lot of strain to this particular area of the back and it will straighten your lower back the lower back is modeled naturally to have a curve 
that medically we call allodosis. Mm -hmm. So if anybody diminishes this curve by either your posture or by an activity, that will definitely get into pain. Mm -hmm. So coming back to your question about um, so many sessions, yes, sessions we, yeah. we would want to do an intervention as a physiotherapist. Yes. The intervention is basically we are doing it through the skin. Mm -hmm. So we would want to relax the muscles either using a soft tissue manipulation or using mobilization or activities that the patient is able to do but we can only go step by step, mm -hmm. bearing in mind that this particular time the patient is in pain. So because of that, we at times able to do two, three sessions or even more, depending on the severity of the, uh, of the patient. But basically the posture is very important in standing, the posture in sitting, and even walking postures. That helps keep the spine healthy. All right. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I have something for my people. Yeah, because I know they're listening. Yes. I think all said and done, the back is the core of your structure. If you think about it, everything is attached to the, to the spine. Your lower limbs are attached to the spine, your upper limbs are attached to the spine, your head sits on the spine. Now, this being the core, what has been taught to people from when they are young on what to do to maintain the strength of their back? Virtually, most of the time, nothing, apart from two groups of people. Mm -hmm. One is royalty. That's where you see nice princesses and princes sitting straight all the time. And even in grand old age, they still have a posture that the common person doesn't have. I think mm. just take a picture of the UK and see it for yourself. Yes. So they are taught and they teach their children from when they're very young how to maintain posture and keep that regal posture. Mm -hmm. That's something I think Kenyans should have. And I think I'm stealing a secret for them. Mm -hmm. The other group of people who are taught that, but they don't know why they're being taught. And again, it's because of the training is the armed forces and the, the, the Jeru, the Jeshi, police, whatever. Yes. They are told Kifu Ambele. Kifu Ambele. Now, if you put Kifu Ambele, coincidentally, you straighten your back. So they say, Askari, ni Kifu Ambele, you have to sit like this. Because if you don't maintain the back well, back issues become a thing that haunts the patient. They can't actually be able to fight and perform the arduous tasks that mm -hmm. they're supposed to perform. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling Kenyans today that I'm stealing a secret for you. Yes. Back. Posture, maintenance, and exercise is core to your remaining straight and elegant for the days of your life. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. You're watching In the Market. And today we turn our focus on what is happening in the medical field. And we are actually looking at orthopedic care. And I start with a, a problem question. Does joint pain and discomfort uh, stop you from doing what you love? Well, it is time to see an orthopedic doctor. Your pain may result from a sprain, a strain, or a ligament, a tear that needs immediate attention. The wear and tear associated with arthritis or related medical condition. Today, I have in studio with me orthopedic specialist and, of course, physiotherapist as well as sports medicine specialist who use the full range of treatments to return you to the activities you enjoy. Allow me to introduce them to you. If you're joining us this morning, of course, we were uh, talking about... Uh, you know, uh, the spine, also looking at the hip joint as well. We have with us Dr. Peter Kamau Njiroge, who's a consultant orthopedic surgeon. Also, we do have with us Dr. Richard Buana. Dr. Richard Buana Ombachi is a consultant spine surgeon. We do have as well with us Dr. Francis Mbugwa, orthopedics and sports medicine uh, expert. Also, we do have with us Bernard Oteno as a consultant physiotherapist as well. Our numbers will be up momentarily. I want you to call in, ask questions. And of course, this is free consultation. I've done you a favor this morning because if you go to actually see these doctors, right, you need to pay a arm and a leg, of course, for consultancy. So you can actually call in, ask questions and share uh, also your contribution here on AM Live. You can head over to a Twitter handle, AM Live NTV is a Twitter handle, AM Live NTV is a profile name on Facebook, and 20505 is our SMS portal. Right, let's just get uh, by looking at, uh, first of all, arthritis, because um, I, I know this resonates with many Kenyans, and uh, to just get, get a general understanding of what arthritis is all about. It is common, but it is not well understood, and we're given to understand that actually arthritis is not a single disease. It is an informal way of referring to a joint pain or a joint disease. Let's just begin with you, Dr. Njoroge. Arthritis. Well, uh, Diba, um, it, like you say, arthritis is this thing that um, is all over. Yes. Plagues a lot of people and uh, is very confusing to many people. Now, I want to correct something. Yes. It doesn't cost an arm and a leg to see an orthopedic surgeon. It just costs to have an arm and a leg fixed by an orthopedic <laughs> surgeon. <laughs> so, I like it. Mm -hmm. So arthritis is 
basically inflammation of the joint. The joint is angry, it's annoyed, so it's hot, it's swollen, it's painful. Okay? The question is, what has caused that to happen? Some of it can just be processed within your body that cause the body having reaction against itself. And that, like the case of that would be something like rheumatoid arthritis, where the body actually is not able to coordinate its immunity very well and ends up attacking its own tissues. Okay? Then you have another very common arthritis that plagues most people who are uh, maybe middle-aged and elderly, elderly. This is osteoarthritis. And in very lay language, it's wear and tear of the joint mm -hmm. from use or some point in time from I impact loading, uh, like uh, footballers, and Dr. Mbogo is going to comment on that, would actually tend to have arthritis of the knee earlier than other people. Mm -hmm. Okay, So this wear and tear, which is very common in the old age group, yes. and these other arthritis that don't have anything to do with the wear and tear that would occur distributed evenly throughout the entire uh, range of 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 of, 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 of humans from children all the way to adults and like you said it's not one there are very many types so arthritis is not a diagnosis per se it is just saying you have arthritis maybe you should ask your doctor what type of arthritis is it then maybe they'll be able to answer you and walk you through the treatment because the treatment protocol for all these different types of arthritis are different but i think because sports is so important i want dr mbogo to actually say and and give us a close to how many the genesis of some of these uh, arthritis in joints actually happen as related to sports. Mm. So yeah, before we head to sports, because we want to just lay down an understanding. Yes. We have arthritis, degenerative, inflammatory. Maybe yes. you can tell us more about that so that we can actually know where do we fall. Inflammatory, uh, infectious, also arthritis. Yes. Uh, what is all about? I can see you're also holding you want to lift <laughs> the chart as well. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know whether you'd be able to focus on it very yeah. well. Could we yes, just have a camera also zoom in so that we can see? Yes, just continue. Yeah. In a normal joint, I'll start with degenerative arthritis because this plagues our parents and I think they took me to school so I owe them the first chance to explain to them. Yes. Um, when you're young and your joint is okay, there's this part here we call the cartilage. The cartilage is a smooth white cupping of the bone at the end of the bone and it has some very special properties. It is very smooth, okay, very, very smooth. It absorbs shock and when you have synovial fluid added to it, it's actually virtually frictionless. Okay, it's the smoothest, most slippery surface known to man, if you put it that way. Mm -hmm. It's more slippery than a skating rink. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. actually that smooth. But what happens over time, as you grow older, the cartilage, due to many forces, part of it being repeated use, actually starts wearing in. The, the repair is not as quick as the laying of new cartilage. Mm -hmm. And you start having cracks within the cartilage. Eventually, the cartilage gets eroded away. And eventually, you have actually have no cartilage at all. And at this point in time, because bone is very sensitive, it's bone grinding on bone. Mm -hmm. And this causes misery, extreme misery, especially to our old folks. Yes. Some, you can imagine in the village, who have this thing, cannot even use a normal latrine because they can't squat. You squat coming up is a nightmare because the muscles have weakened because of disuse. And it's so painful that actually they describe it's like nothing they can actually put in words. And they tell you life is miserable. Okay? Some of them end up getting other complications of constipation because they're actually afraid to go and relieve themselves. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is something that's the fate of majority of us as we grow older. Not every one of us, but most of us are actually going to get that. The other arthritis, like you asked, is something like reactive arthritis, mm -hmm. inflammatory arthritis. Mm -hmm. This is like rheumatoid arthritis. These may have something to do with the genetic makeup and also the environment. And this is where your immunity attacks itself. So you actually have process within your body where some antibodies are attacking your own tissue in general. And that now, the, 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 you have to try and get the immunity back on track to actually be able to help these people. Mm -hmm. It can pro progress and become worse with time, or sometimes it can actually die out and become completely dormant. Okay? There's another form that is called uh, gout arthritis. Of course, I know you will smile when you hear about that because yeah. it's, it's called the rich man's the disease. The rich man's disease, yeah. This is uh, excessive nyamachoma, especially mm. when you have lots of money to spend and, and things like beer and alcohol, mm. just accentuating it. But remember, it can also be a sign of deeper sinister things yes. like cancers, where you have a tumor lysis syndrome and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so you have a cancer, and as the cells of the cancer die within you, they actually cause the uric acid to come up, mm -hmm. and you get that. Okay, so that is a brief overview, but there are so many that it actually take a lecture of several hours 
to go through them. But those are the basic groups that I would want to actually talk about to the people. So that is uh, metabolic uh, arthritis. That, that is metabolic. Yeah, that would fall now within yes, uh -huh, metabolic okay. arthritis. Well, talk about maybe the fungi, uh, the infectious arthritis. The infectious arthritis is something that will usually occur in small children, yes, mainly, but it can also occur in hosts who are a bit, maybe not as healthy as it should be. You have diabetes or some other conditions where immunity is not as top notch as it otherwise be. Okay, it's a very dangerous thing because what it does is that it erodes the cartilage completely. Mm -hmm. So the cartilage goes away from the infection, and what you're left with is raw bone again. And this you can imagine in a small child, what the sequel is going to be. It's a stiff joint, and the child actually becomes dis disabled for all time. On top of that, it can spread to the bone itself, prevent further growth of the bone, mm -hmm. and actually make somebody who was going to turn out to a splendid young man to be somebody who actually walks with a terrible limb. So all right. it's something that should be diagnosed early and treated like very, very serious with someone who knows what they're doing. So uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you have to be up in uh, years, you're older, so that it can really affect, affect you. A sportsman, yes. yeah? Maybe this is where now Dr. Mbuku can tell us more about uh, sports medicine and arthritis. So the, the, it's true, what, what you just said. The, yes. One of the misconceptions is that arthritis is a disease of the old people. So you hear someone has arthritis is someone who is an old person. So what, what Dr. Tari was mentioning here, this is, for example, a model of the knee joint. It's small. I hope we'll be able to see that. Yes. So when we talk about the cartilage or arthritis, is a disease of the cartilage, the bone, this is the bone at the top yeah. and this is this is the bone at the top, at the bottom. This is a knee joint. Yeah. We call Which this camera? the femur. Yeah. If you may just zoom in, please. We, we, we call this the, 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 the tibia. Yes, please. So you see this smooth surface is the, 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 uh, the cartilage. So you have what would be the rough surface here? And then we have this, which will be the smooth surface. So that smooth surface is the cartilage. Mm -hmm. Now this, the joint generally does not, the cartilage generally does not like things that are, for example, moving or rough inside, yeah. because then it becomes very degenerative very fast. So what, what do sportsmen get? Sportsmen get what we call post-traumatic arthritis or arthritis after an injury. Mm -hmm. So you will find that a player has gotten an injury and then they rest for for, for example, a month, and then they go back. They have a little discomfort in the knee, they feel something hurting them, but they decide not to seek treatment because they can play. So what happens is they will play, but then they have something torn. And what, what usually will happen is that you have torn some of the soft structures inside the knee joint. So you look at the knee joint, you have the cartilage, but you also have this small soft structure, we call this the meniscus, if, if you may look at it. Mm -hmm. So it's soft, this is what absorbs the, the, the weight of, of someone when you're walking and when you're loading it. So when you walk, it basically absorbs the weight. Mm -hmm. It's one of the commonly torn things in sports. So we call it the meniscus. So if you twist it and tore it and then you continue playing on it, then you have a torn piece that continues to rub on that cartilage, continues to rub on that cartilage, and then the cartilage wears out. So you'll find that you have played well in your 20s, then you start reaching your 30s and the pain begins to progress. That's because you had an injury in your early 20s that you never got treated because you were able to play at maybe 90%. Then you continued playing with it. Then in your 30s, you cannot play anymore. Then you find that you have to have complex procedures done at 40 years, which would have been done when you're 70, mm -hmm. as opposed to having a very simple procedure done in your 20s, which would have prevented you from getting arthritis. That's a very common scenario in, in, in our country. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we try to highlight to people. If you have an injury, get it checked out. It's not all of them that will need treatment, but get it checked out. Then you're told, oh no, this one doesn't need treatment, you need to have rehabilitation for this. No, this one, you need treatment. Mm -hmm. It's usually, we are advanced in the medical care, especially for for sports injuries nowadays that we can do what we call minimally invasive surgeries where you just put a small camera inside your joint, treat the small problem before it becomes a big problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. We understand also the women are predisposed to arthritis uh, mostly. Why is that so, Dr. Mbache? Uh, arthritis actually is a disease of the joint and uh, if the joints are overloaded, that would mean that the wear and the tear is also faster than uh, when they are less loaded. So ladies tend slightly to be more obese compared to, to, to men. And that increases the friction between the joints in a simple way. Uh, that also pre makes them to be more predisposed uh, than men. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that men generally tend to work out more than uh, the ladies.
and this helps the rubrication of the services better than uh, the ladies and that also is another thing that has been found mm. to be contributory okay all right so when we come now to uh, bernard uh, with arthritis uh, uh, how how do you also determine the sessions that a person should have uh, with maybe different sort of arthritis that we've just mentioned uh, or uh, looked at this morning Yes, the, well, the amount of the number of sessions really depend on the presentation of a particular patient. But of course, for um, let's say we're working with a sports person who has been exercising before and the muscles are quite strong, the muscles are able to control the joint better, then the physiotherapy intervention will not be very long. Mm -hmm. So most of the time we encourage uh, our clients, even if they need to go for a surgical intervention, there's always the pre surgical physiotherapy so they are able to do some exercises strengthen the muscles so that they're able to control the joint better so even after the surgery it's easy to rehabilitate them but uh, just adding on what dr mbachi said about um, uh, arthritis we most people have uh, ladies and uh, mostly the wear and tear of the hip joint post uh, post um, menopause that's also one of the things that make ladies more predisposed to arthritis. Yeah, so we talk about primary care. When we, we were talking about a primary care, what, what do we essentially mean, uh, Dr. Jeroge? Because um, that's where you begin with the primary care. Well, primary, primary, primary care will come from a long, long way off. I think it, it has to begin with training our people in a way of life. Mm -hmm. It actually amuses me that in some countries like China, you have children being taught physical exercise from yes. very early on. Yes. And I think some of these things we omit to tell people because the, 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 the tone of your muscles, the ability to understand how to treat your joint carefully, because it's a heritage, it's something you're going to have for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the more you take care of it, the better. So it comes and starts from actually from education okay. point of view, mm -hmm. which I have to agree maybe as, as health people we have failed. We, we have not reached out to people as much as we should mm -hmm. and to educate them how to prevent injuries happening in the first place. Basic things like telling ladies that high heels are dangerous things. I know this is a very touchy topic, the but, heels, eh? <laughs> but I'd have to and say it because well. it's, as a doctor, it's my job to speak. I'm the lawyer of the, of, of the joints, so yes. I have to speak for the joints, yes. even if I, I don't make some people very amused with me. But the point is, things like high heels actually totally uh, mess up the normal posture and the weight transmission through the joints, and the gait, as we understand it, the way it was intended to be, mm -hmm. is quite disrupted. So high heels are the enemies of the joints. And I tell many people who come to me with initial joint pains that shoe wear can actually mess you very quickly. So high heels to me is one of the ways actually, if I could get away of burning them completely as a doctor, mm -hmm. maybe I would because it's my job to see Kenyans looking healthy and walking straight without joint pains. But then again, I'm sorry to the ladies, but the truth has to be spoken. So then, it's, it's any sort of high heels, so it doesn't matter. The, anything the, above two yeah, inches really starts, yeah. anything above two inches, whether it's a wedge anything or stilettos, yes. just starts messing the dynamics and the body weight transmission and actually end up, ends up messing the joints, especially the knees, the hips and the feet. The joints of the feet. So in your practice, you actually um, experience a lot of, uh, you know, women coming with back joints. You should see the pain, the 50-year-olds who've been wearing high heels for the last 30 years. You should see the kind of things they come with. That's when it, the pain oh, yeah, the comes dividends, the dividends are actually rolling in. And I, it's, it's my job to spare people that pain. So I have to tell them the truth early enough. So, I mean, if they go ahead, they were warned by a loving doctor but if they, <laughs> <laughs> if they come by then time it will be it will be too late okay the other thing is sports actually uh -huh. and one of the biggest tragedies is that we don't tell our young men that jogging on tarmac with the wrong shoe mm. actually ends up being very harsh to the knees especially thank you and you can actually end up getting arthritis that wasn't your your lot because of of wrong use of joints the beba people uh, when you see these young men again trying to make a living carrying extremely high weights that also actually gives some uh, very heavy trauma to the joints and that actually also produces them from getting arthritis early. The other thing is actually accidents. Accidents. And I think accidents is one of the biggest elephants in, in the Kenyan room because when you get trauma passing through the joint, especially, uh, you know, somebody comes to you and they have a fracture of the femur, for instance, and you think that's it. But remember that force was transmitted through a joint before the femur broke. Mm -hmm. So there's some unseen injury to the cartilage of the joint that will actually hasten arthritis happening in that joint like uh, before its time. Mm -hmm. So trauma is one of those things actually people have to be very careful about. And it's a pity that uh, trauma prevention hasn't been given as much 
uh, emphasis is actually it should be given in a country that's poor like us. We cannot afford to fix fractures. They're very expensive. Mm -hmm. I think the average uh, cost for treatment for a fracture would be about 120,000 mm -hmm. on average, and that's easy in a general hospital. Now, can we afford that with the kind of workload we have and the kind of number of accidents we are having in this country? Can we really afford 120,000 for every person who breaks a bone? Wouldn't the better thing be actually to try Thank and you. campaign and prevent these things from happening by putting rules in place? Thank you. Yeah. Right, we have callers who are hanging on the line, and of course, uh, they'll ask you questions as well. We have Bakita calling all the way from uh, Kiambu. Good morning, Bakita. Hello. Hello. You have a question or a contribution, Bakita? I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, I was diagnosed with poliosis on November 16th. Mm -hmm. I've been with that problem now that until now my problem is a little bit better. Yes. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, uh, we can hear you go on. Yes. I have a problem. My, right now my leg is not paining. Mm -hmm. My back is not paining that much. Yes. But my, but my leg is paining. Your leg is paining, your, yeah. your back is ah, not paining. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ah. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Bakita. How old are you, Bakita? Yeah. Sorry? How old are you, Bakita? How old? Oh, uh, Bakita, uh, the doctor yeah. is asking you how old are you? I'm 13. I'm 14. You're 14? Yeah. 14 years. 14 years old, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, uh, let's also hear from, uh, from Faria. She's calling all the way from Turkana. Faria, good morning. We seem, we seem to have lost Faria. Rehema, good morning. Yes. Yes, Rehema, you have a question or a contribution for the doctors? Yeah, I have two questions. Yes. The first one is on myself. I, when I was younger, I used to have cramps. I normally have cramps for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And uh, these cramps, they kind of paralyze my lower, they can be carrier plus my... My right foot. Yes. I cannot walk even right now. Mm -hmm. I'm on my cramp. Okay. So I wanted to know how they can help me. And then I have my nine year old son mm -hmm. uh, on his heel. Yes. Every morning on his heel, he normally feels pain on his, on his heel. So yeah. I don't know what's happening with him. Every morning? Yeah, when he's going to school. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. All right, those two questions. Maybe you can take uh, Bakita's and uh, Vrahema's as we try and also we hear from uh, 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 Faria as well from Turkana. And we, of course, you can call in. I hear there are many also of, of you hanging on the line. Let's just answer those two questions. Uh, we begin with you also, uh, Dr. Mbachi, maybe addressing uh, Bakita's uh, issue okay. this morning. Okay, Bakita had uh, a question on uh, scoliosis. She has scoliosis. Yes. And scoliosis basically is the deformity of the back. Uh, the back takes an S shape, okay? The causes for this are many. It could be that she was born with it. It could be that uh, you, uh, uh, you develop it as maybe after an infection or after trauma. Uh, but as co considering your age, it looks like it's a scoliosis that you developed in the course of your growth. Uh, you are 14 years old, and what you need to do is to see a doctor who will examine you and be able to determine the magnitude of your scoliosis. It's not a must that we treat all the scoliosis. Some of the scoliosis are just mere diversions of the normal curvature of the spine, and all that we need to do is to follow you up uh, and make sure that it doesn't progress adversely. Uh, however, if we examine you and we find that it is of the magnitude that needs an operation, then we have surgeries which we can do uh, to straighten up the back. We may not make it 100% straight, but we'll straighten it up and we'll be able to prevent it from progressing further. So, Bakita, you need to see uh, an orthopedic surgeon, you need to see a spine surgeon who will assess you and be able to determine what is the cause of your scoliosis. After determining the scoliosis, cause of your scoliosis and the magnitude, then you can be able to give you a program uh, for treatment. But it is good to hear that you are not in pain uh, but the pain going down, the, uh, you don't have pain on your back, but you have pain going down your leg. That needs to be examined and investigated by what we call an MRI. An MRI. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the question also that uh, we had uh, from uh, Rehema, uh, I think uh, on the, uh, on the menses as yes. well. Uh, is it you or Dr. Njoroge or any of you can actually no, answer? Take it. Okay. Now, uh, 
Rehema, I think you could be having such severe pain that may be presenting uh, like cramps going down uh, your legs. Uh, on the other hand, it would be nice to be examined by a gynecologist who may determine whether you have a condition uh, whereby you have uh, engorgement uh, of the tissues within the pelvis that may actually be compressing on your nerves because you are saying that the cramps actually go down your, your legs. Eh? Uh, you need a proper examination to make sure that you don't have uh, a condition uh, which will cause engorgement uh, and distension of the tissues around the pelvis mm -hmm. that will make you have pain going down your leg. But otherwise, this does not affect the spine directly. Uh, it may affect the nerve roots that are coming out of the spine by just compressing on them. Uh, so you need a proper investigation which will be able to determine whether your pelvis is engorged by other tissues that may be compressing on your nerves. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a question of a little boy uh, uh, after, you know, when he wakes up in the morning, I think a nine-year-old, uh, yes, there's pain on the heels. Yeah. Could you tell us more about that? So what, what, uh, what our, uh, our viewer was talking about, we, we have a fancy name for it. We call it plantar fasciitis, which just means plantar the heel is plantar, uh, down there at the mm -hmm. heel. Mm -hmm. There is a cord of tissue that comes from the heel all the way to the toes. And that's what protects the vessels because as you walk, you have a certain curve that your leg usually has. Most people will notice that. So as you walk, you collapse the foot and your vessels are protected by a tight band of tissue that comes right from the heel all the way to the toes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if you have a tight structure there or if you have a tight heel cord or Achilles, then what happens in the course of your day-to-day -day activities, you're overstretching that band. Then at night it goes into some reparative mode or when you sit for long, for example, you're seated here, mm -hmm. it goes into reparative mode. Then when you wake up or stand, it's stiff because it, there's some healing that has been going on there. So then you wake up and you start stretching it and they feel pain. What they will tell you is that after they've walked for five, ten minutes, it's, it's fine. Then if they sit again, then it becomes stiff. So what we usually recommend mm -hmm. and, the best, and the basic uh, treatment one is the type of shoes that they wear. So you shoes. usually will recommend, as Dr. is keep saying, do not wear high heels once you start having heel pain. Because what happens is you actually tighten the heel cord more. You make it tighter. You want to wear shoes that actually support that structure. So we say shoes that have an arch support. So they support the structure we call the fascia or the tissues underneath the foot. Uh, two, there are some stretching exercises mm -hmm. that are done. And this we usually will require the physiotherapist to demonstrate to you because it's hard for me to do that. And there are stretching exercises that you can do that actually stretch it and make it relax so that it doesn't contract on you and you're forcing it to stretch. Every time you walk, you're forcing it to stretch. Mm -hmm. So shoe wear and stretching exercises for that. A lot of times we'll take it away. Now it takes a while to go away. It's not, so, it's not going to take a month because all these things you're going to do for a while, then, 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 then it goes away. Mm -hmm. Now if it persists after doing all this, then now we recommend that they go for an evaluation, a proper evaluation to see is there anything else that we need to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we come now to the physiotherapist. Mm -hmm. uh, could it be also maybe the shoe wear? Uh, maybe the, the son is not wearing the right type of shoe as you know what we've had from Dr. Mbugo as well and what what will you recommend what sort of uh, exercises because you say you can demonstrate for us yeah exactly uh, the shoe wear is very important in this particular situation if any case the shoe is very hard inside and mostly like um, the shoes that the children use to schools after um, two three months of usage the inner part becomes very hard that can always trigger this but uh, we also have a little bit of that uh, plantar fasciitis that comes when the shoe is slightly oversized. So the foot is moving in and out of the shoe. So we are basically rubbing the fascia down in the foot and that can bring in an inflammation. Mm -hmm. The simple stretches that somebody can do on their own is holding onto the wall with one foot on the ground and then you stretch so that the ankle joint stretches in that direction. That will be able to stretch the fascia and should give a relief. Sometimes we recommend as an immediate action that they can stop using the official leather shoes that they use for school. They can get into sneakers or um, the sport shoes. That will always be quite comfortable for short-term usage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
I wanted just also to talk about, especially from the sports. Uh, people normally say, uh, especially with the hip uh, or the the heel problem, when you use the tarmac, you know, for your jogging in the morning, as opposed to also, you know, uh, just the soft ground. Uh, people recommend the soft ground, you know, where there's grass, of course, using soil, as opposed to the tarmac. And most people use the tarmac as well. But uh, how? destructive can that be or, uh, to, to your heel or maybe you know your muscle or your ligaments your joint so what 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 you find is the your bodies your joints they are what we call joints that bear your weight and they're joints that basically help you with function yes. basically so we have joints that bear your weight and all the way from the spine it bears your weight mm -hmm. to the hip joints the knee joints and the ankle joints so a lot of times when you load the foot inappropriately or in an, in an inappropriate surface, you're actually incurring abnormal forces in these joints that bear weight, all the way from the spine going all the way down. It's just that sometimes you may feel uh, the heel more because it's the one that is in direct contact. So jogging on tarmac may not by itself be necessarily a problem, but you have to have the appropriate uh, shoes to jog on tarmac. Mm -hmm. What you'll find is that most people will jog on tarmac but you have shoes that you have been wearing for 10 years, for example. Mm -hmm. So you've been wearing these shoes for 10 years. The padding is completely almost finished. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you, it's supposed to be absorbing the shock. Because what you realize is that the shoes that are made for running, they actually have special ab shock absorbing mechanism. So that every time you load your foot, you're not just bumping on hard ground, but mm -hmm. it absorbs that shock. So if, if you wear shoes for a very long time and it has lost its shock absorbing mechanism, mm -hmm. then that's not a proper shoe to jog on, on tarmac. Now you may still be able to jog with it on grass because then the grass is not very hard, uh, but you shouldn't wear it on tarmac. So a lot of that has to do with the type of shoe you're wearing. So if you don't have the proper attire or the proper shoe that has good shock absorption mechanism, do not jog on tarmac. Right. You'd rather jog on a soft ground because then that, that prevents you from uh, incurring abnormal forces on the joint. All right, so we have yeah. Beatrice and uh, we have also uh, Zaina hanging on the line. Let, let's just uh, pick up uh, on Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice, good morning. You have a question or a contribution for our panelists? Beatrice from Kakamega. Good morning, Beatrice. All right. Good morning, Beatrice. All right, she's not. Uh, uh, we have Susan. Susan hanging on the line from Nairobi. Good morning, Susan. Morning, Beatrice. Morning to you. Have a question or a contribution for yeah. the doctors? Yes, please. Yeah, but first of all, I want to thank the doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is about an explanation that the doctor gave about uh, the pain um, at the heel. Yes. And I just heard that the doctor talked about high heels. I've never been on high heels mm -hmm. uh, for the longest time because I don't even remember. Uh, but what is so scary, uh, I wanted the doctor to maybe clarify, can that problem be erased? I'm asking this because my younger sister also experiences the same. Mm -hmm. And um, the last time she checked on a doctor, she yes. was told that, her, I don't know, some bone is uh, growing somewhere and the only therapy is to be injected. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the experience is so scary. And from what I listened from the doctor, he has not talked about any you know, of those things. Mm -hmm. I experience the same thing in the morning. Yes. When I see, mm -hmm. when I wake up, uh, I think the same thing, but I saw for sometimes it disappears. So now I want to hear from him. Is the therapy still the same, that of big injection? Yes. Uh, direct to the bone or uh, maybe exercising? Thank you. I don't know. Right, thank you, thank you. Uh, oh, Susan, thank you. Calling from Nairobi. Let's go back to Beatrice. She, she's hanging on the line from Kakamega. Beatrice, good morning. Good morning, Hello. Beatrice. Yes, morning. We can hear you. You have a question or a contribution? Yes, I wanted to ask. Yes, please. Can you clarify the whole issue of Thermotherapy. Uh huh. The whole issue of? Uh, using thermotherapy on the spine. Eh? Yes, yes. Whereby it's like, a, you know, the electric mask where the, the thermal. You lie on for your yes. spine. Yes, yes. And apparently it says that uh, when your spine is sorted, mm -hmm. it's kind of most of the elements are connected to the spine. Yes. So there's a whole bit of using thermotherapy, meaning when you use thermotherapy, mm -hmm. You will be okay, and actually we have places where that is what is happening, and patients go there for thermotherapy every day. All right. So can you clarify that? All right, thermal uh, therapy. Then we have uh, Zena as well from Mombasa. Good morning, uh, Zaina. Good morning, Dibaha. Very well, thank you. You have a question or a contribution for our, yes. for our doctors, uh, yes. Okay, so a week ago, yes, please. I was sick and ironing. 
Mm -hmm. And I happened to stretch my arm when I was ironing, and then it got scared like uh, so a joint or something that's not inside me mm -hmm. uh, from the lower back on mm -hmm. the right side. Yes. It was very painful. Mm -hmm. and then uh, the pain persisted, and then like the second or the third day, I had the same snap on the lower back side on my right. Yes. So first I went to the doctor. The doctor did not examine me, mm -hmm. but uh, he stipulated my heart. Uh, he said some gifts might have detached or something. Mm -hmm. Or my spine, uh, my spinal cord, the technique, and she took and that's exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. So he uh, administered some medicine uh, for the interview. Yes. So I noticed that I'm using this medicine, the pain stops, but then afterwards it comes back. It comes back. So I thought maybe this is just pain killers. So when someone who does massage, and they also told me the same thing about maybe some gifts um, disconnecting or something. But then um, I'm taking the medicine and I'm doing the massage on the lower back, but the pain is still persisting. And now my question is, if indeed there are some gifts that have been discussed, can just uh, taking medicine bring them back together, or what is that with the doctor that we to do? Thank you. Thank you, Zena, uh, for Mombasa as well. We'll be taking some more calls, but let's just hear the reactions of the doctors as well. Uh, beginning with uh, Susan there, Dr. Njoroge, you, you want to address uh, her concerns this morning? Of course, and also oh, we yeah. shall hear from, uh, uh, from Dr. Bugo as well. Yeah, uh, she, she, Susan says she's not uh, worn high heels, and, and that's okay, that's commendable. Uh, but remember, high heels predispose you to getting this plantar fasciitis, they may predispose to getting it, but doesn't mean that if you don't wear high heels that you won't get plantar fasciitis. Men get plantar fasciitis, and by and large, unless we go back to the 70s, men don't wear platforms anymore. We wear flat shoes. Mm -hmm. I think that has been the fashion for the last 20 years or so, and they still get it. So it's an imbalance. About her asking uh, whether it's hereditary, look, I'm sure she resembles her sister, not just facially, but sometimes the structure of the body is also a bit common within a family. So there may be some inherent uh, bit of foot architecture <coughs> that predisposes them as a family mm -hmm. to having such a thing. So I can't rule that out. There's something sometimes uh, called a calcaneal spar, the bone she's talking about. An x-ray is taken and you're told there's a bone there at the heel. I wish we had an x-ray here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't, we don't have one. And they say that piece of bone is what actually pricks the, 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 whatever, the sole of the foot as you're walking. Mm -hmm. That is strictly not true. Okay, the bone is there even in normal people. If you take 10 random people and do an x-ray, all seven of them will have that, that spar because it's where a certain muscle of the sole of the foot attaches. And it has nothing at all to do with the heel pain. So I think she should not be worried about the growth of the bone causing the pain. That is, that is not there. About the treatment, we start with physiotherapy, like Bana talked about, the, the, the stretch exercises yes. and painkillers and more painkillers, and that will handle maybe 80% of the people. Sometimes uh, the pain lingers and what you may want to do is give an injection, a local injection of steroids just at the very place mm -hmm. where that inflammation is going on. And it's safe and it should not be worried so long as it's given by a competent person, mm -hmm. an orthopedic surgeon who is nearest her. It's given in a safe way. It actually helps a lot. But we start with physiotherapy, stretch exercises and some painkillers. Then if that doesn't work, then we escalate it. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't be worried about it. It's not something that will... Uh, prevent her from reaching 100 years of age, everything holding constant. It's something that can be sorted out and she can reach ripe old age without any issue at all. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, you, uh, we pick up also on uh, Beatrice. Yeah, Beatrice, I think, is be more oh, Bernard's we can act, issue. We, we yeah. can have Bernard uh, yeah. on, on that of physiotherapy. Yeah. Beatrice talked about thermal therapy. Yes. And uh, thermal therapy, as uh, she puts it, is supposed to be heat therapy. We're just using heat to relax. So in any uh, occasion when you have tight muscles everybody would either want a hot water bottle or get something warm to relax muscles the reaction of a tight muscle when you heat it is that there is increased blood circulation mm -hmm. the increased blood circulation relaxes a muscle and a relaxed muscle is pain free mm -hmm. so basically that's what is happening i would like to add that thermal therapy is does not have any side effects it's like the normal heat so that is quite encouraged and on top of that she should just add in a little bit of stretches to make sure she maintains the length of the muscle mm -hmm. yes okay uh, um, let's come to Zena I think we've addressed Zena's uh, issue uh, yeah. Dr. Ombachi can tell us uh, we've yeah. not really addressed that yeah, yeah. 
Zena, uh, what Zena is actually, uh, the, the symptoms that she's talking about are, as she has been told, most likely due to a torn disc. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said earlier, uh, the spine is made of some small bones and some soft tissues between uh, the bones. Eh? Yes. These soft tissues, when strained uh, by wrong posture, mm -hmm. or you actually uh, carry a heavy load and you strain uh, the, your back, then the disc is likely to be strained and it can tear. If it tears, then patient develops uh, quite severe pain. Now, if it tears massively and the contents within the disc come out, then they will compress on a nerve. Uh, now, I was actually waiting uh, to hear her talking about pain going down the leg, but she didn't mention that, which means that her tear is not that severe. It's just a small tear, and usually this heals with the time. Uh, about eight to ten weeks, she should be ac actually be able to pain to be pain free. Uh, at this time, there is no need of even taking over an MRI because it will not change management. But uh, if the pain persists after ten to twelve weeks, the pain is persistent. Then an MRI may be taken to confirm that tear. So it is a tear that will heal on its own at this time, and especially the fact that it is not compressing any nerve on her back. Mm -hmm. Right, and of course, uh, MRI for most of them that uh, that uh, don't really understand is a magnetic, magnetic uh, resonance, resonance imaging. imaging yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can now t tell us more about it for mm -hmm. them that they don't really understand what it is. Okay. Uh, what, what sort of image are we talking about? Yeah, an, talking an MRI about? basically is a sophisticated type of uh, investigative modality, which uh, will map out your tissues very clearly, especially the soft tissues. So when you take an MRI, it will show us the discs very clearly. Uh, and if there is any tear there, uh, that will be, uh, it will be shown very clearly with the MRI. The yes. MRI is a magnetic resonance imaging. Yes. It basically uses a magnet. Uh, the tissues are excited uh, with that magnet. And then uh, call it an X-ray is taken as the tissues, as the, uh, the, the, elect the electrons are uh, settling. Uh, a picture is taken, which will tell us the mm -hmm. tissues... Uh, the way they are and it's a very safe procedure you can actually have hundred of them with no side effect because that is the common question that uh, most patients will ask whether the MRI has got any side effect the MRI has got no side effect in fact it's even safer than uh, an ordinary x-ray and it's a very good investigation that shows the tissues uh, the bones the soft tissues and if there's any enough compression the MRI will be able to uh, mark it out and you will be able to get treatment as such. Okay. We have more, more questions also on uh, social media and uh, let's just begin with Frank. Frank says that uh, my son occasionally says he has pain along the waist. He's eight years old. We've taken him for checkup but we're told not to be alarmed. What can be the cause? Also just note that uh, your, your last telephone line that number he gives us is also dead. Uh, maybe you, you can Take note of that. We move on to another question as well. We do have as well uh, Jara Tang. He says, uh, Yolani is a bit busy this morning. So he says, I got an accident last year, November, and uh, from then I have had this sharp pain once in a while on my lower left back. What procedure should I seek to address this? Although someone advises it's soft tissue injury and will go away. Also, we have uh, Evan Sunyango is asking, what causes a uh, satika problem? I think that's a medical term. Uh, you will let us know as well. Also, we do have as well Dr. Joffrey Ngeti. She says, today's show is great. We should have much, uh, we should have more such like shows where consultants from various medical fields are invited to enlighten the people. And uh, we have also Kurosaki Marucho. We've got an elderly arthritic fellow uh, for whom we are seeking help in Nairobi. How can we get in touch with this specialist? And uh, just let's uh, finish all of them. Is there classes for drug per the different types of arthritis? As also we have also uh, Jacob Ambere Amtalala, Abere Amtalala is asking, please may you ask the panelists how does sitting in the office, uh, sit long, uh, sitting for a long time or long distance driving ends up, uh, ends up one diagnosis or told he or she is suffering of arthritis or how are they related to orthopedic problem, uh, problems in life? Let's just answer those uh, briefly. 
Okay. Yeah, so Dr. Bugo. I think, I think I can start. I think many of them will just choose. <laughs> so I can start with the waist pain. I think, I think if this uh, the gentleman talks about his son who has pain in the waist, yes. uh, they have been evaluated and told that there is there's, there's, there's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say there's nothing wrong, it doesn't necessarily mean they don't have pain because that sometimes may be a, mis uh, uh, a miscommunication. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we have to realize is that we talked about the body being a component of many parts. So we have bones, we have muscles, we have ligaments, we have joints. So when they have waist pain, the waist is basically the pelvis, as we were being shown, mm -hmm. there, and the joints, the hip joints. So it could be that they have pain from the bone, and as the child is growing, there are some specific conditions that they get mm -hmm. that would uh, cause them to have pain. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be that it's from the muscles. As a child plays around, they may strain something and the pain persists for a long time. Uh, but what, in general, what I would advise them, what you want to think about is, is this pain increasing? Or is the pain maybe on and off? Is it preventing them from doing their day-to-day -day activities? For a child, for example, are they being unable to play, to go to school? Or they just complain of pain, but they, they can do everything that they want. And when they come to us, we usually want to go in a systematic way Thank to uh, uh, evaluate them. We will do an x-ray to rule out a bone pathology. Mm -hmm. That is what would worry us the most. Thank you. So if we look at it and see the bone is essentially normal, then most of the times we know that there is a likelihood that this will resolve with time. Thank you. So I would only worry if it refuses to go away. Thank you. Over time. Let's hear from uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Njeroge. Jarateng had a question. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, he had an accident. and You've taken the sharp yes, point yes. that he's talking about. On the lower yeah. left. Of his he says he had an accident in November last yes, year. Yes, yes. And uh, he still has some low, sharp, low back pain. Um, well, November is way back. That he should have recovered by now. Uh, not to scare him, because it doesn't mean that it, it's a big thing. It means some, something should have been done. I, I hope he has had x-rays done, and I hope fractures were ruled out. But remember, accidents, sometimes we just see the drama in having a fracture. But remember, the bone may not be injured, but there are very many other soft tissues, muscles, ligaments, tendons, nerves, that are actually be injured in the process. Now, unless a proper diagnosis is made as to what part of his anatomy is paining him, and sort it out. And it can be something very simple like just physiotherapy mm -hmm. to stretch a group of muscles that was injured and never rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. And he may require some modalities, maybe just a plain x-ray, if we need to amplify it more, MRI, but he might be surprised that the thing is just a small thing that was never addressed the correct way. And with just a little bit of intervention can actually be sorted out. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, uh, sciatica problem? Sci Let's yeah. see. Sciatica. Sci sci sciatica. Sci sciatica. Yes. Uh, sciatica comes from the, the sciatic nerve. Yes. Uh, sciatic nerve is a big nerve that is, uh, arises from the lower back, uh, going down behind uh, the thigh, uh, all the way down to the calf muscles. Now, when a nerve is impinged by the disc, then that pain will go down along that nerve. So that is why that type of pain is called sciatic pain, uh, and commonly known as sciatica. Now, if somebody has ty that type of a pain, this is somebody who qualifies for uh, an investigation, uh, the MRI investigation that we said, and this will be able to clearly map it out that if there's a disc that is compressing one of the nerves of this nerve, uh, then it can be sorted out. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have um, Talala on the issue of uh, uh, long driving and also yeah, sitting in the office. When you talk about the ergonomics of the office, uh, also the seats as well, uh, that can be a problem. Maybe you can tell us uh, a bit of that, uh, Bernard. Yeah, just to shed some light on um, Talala's um, request, sitting again, the question is how do we sit? Because we have to support the spine. When we look at the spine and the way the structures are, uh, we have the ribs starting from somewhere there all the way to what we call thoracic 12 and right in front here we just have the stomach so our lower back is this is the only bony content at this particular point and it is very very prone to strains so when we come to long driving how do we sit if he sits with the car seat inclined this is what is going to happen to his back because he has to see the road ahead and he is operating on the pedals and uh, the accelerator. So he's going to straighten the lower back. So I would like to advise him that he has to get his posture correctly sitting. And for a short-term intervention, 
we have things we call lumbar rolls, which is uh, a nice foam roll that he can put on his lower back between his back and the car seat so that we maintain the curvature in the lower back. He has it that way. The same with the sitting in the office. We might not have the facilities to do the ergonomic checks on everybody, but just a quick bit that we must get our feet straight on the floor, our hips at 90 degrees, and chest out as Dr. Kamau said. And we work straight with our computers ahead. That's the only way we will be able to get the back in a proper position and we'll not get all the strains of life when all right so long. we're winding up right now uh, each of you got uh, 30 seconds and my director may just indulge me one minute I, i'll go to ask a very uh, pressing question for many kenyans as well because there's the issue of uh, psychomatic uh, stresses uh, or uh, yeah you have you know stress but it's affecting also your body i've had a friend also you know stress uh, to, took him and uh, he was paralyzed a bit and uh, he they go to the hospital they can't see the problem physically and they say this is you know due to you know stress you can talk about it uh, briefly, very briefly, uh, mm -hmm. psychomatic, uh, you know, uh, stresses. How does your mind also affect uh, your stability when it comes to, you know, your body as well? Okay. Uh, very briefly. The, mi the mind actually is a very sensitive, uh, uh, is a very sensitive uh, place whereby any disturbance or any alteration of uh, the way it thinks, then it is likely to manifest as a disease elsewhere. This is what we call psychosomatization. Mm -hmm. Psychosomatization simply means that you have a stress, something stressing you differently, and to the outward world, uh, you don't know, the mind cannot actually be able to, to express it outside itself. So it, pre it's, it presents as uh, an issue in a particular area. This is very common in patients presenting with back pain. Uh, sometimes you have stress, maybe you, you don't want to go to work on a particular day, then uh, you actually feign like you have back pain. Uh, this feigning that you have back pain uh, is simply the mind trying to see that I've got to justify. Thank you. Yeah, let's leave it at that because of time. And uh, Dr. Mbubo, your closing remarks this morning, please, 30 seconds. So my closing remarks would be one, a message to actually the policymakers in sports uh, fraternity. Mm -hmm. Because we have football, we have rugby, and we have hockey and all these things. We need to put a lot of emphasis on player welfare mm -hmm. because we have a lot of injuries in sports, but we do not have the systems to take care of our players when they get injured. We celebrate them when they're performing well, but when they get injured, we put them, push them at the back. We need to improve our player welfare mechanism. Kenya Rugby does a very good job, but we also have a lot of these other sporting in, uh, fraternity that they need to catch up right. on this. Dr. Njiroge. Yeah, I would want to tell my people that it's the right of every Kenyan to actually be able to walk straight and with freedom and without pain. And I think that's what orthopedics is about. It, I think one of the pillars that our president is talking about is universal healthcare. And I think orthopedics is key to that. And I think it's, it's nice to know that the doctors are very willing and ready to engage both at the advisorial as well as actually expert provision to some of these things. There is, however, somebody uh, to steal more than my 30 seconds, somebody who asked about an arthritic fella. I think we ignored him. There was yeah. one, one question yeah. about some, know, 30 seconds. We, some, some arthritis we start, we start fella. Some time. What I want to tell you is there's, um, the answer to arthritis can be both medication and two, it can be joint replacement. Now, Kenyans need to know that when arthritis is very advanced, joint replacement for the knee, the hip, and the shoulder is actually very available in this country with proper experts, and it doesn't have to have the tag of expensive Thank the you. way people right. think. Yeah. Dr. Okay. Okay. Mine, mine is brief is to request the authorities that be that we actually need to create more centers that uh, handle some of the diseases that we've been talking about. We need to create centers that uh, have specialty. Like now, we only have one uh, spine rehabilitation center in the country. Mm -hmm. We need to create these centers all over the country for our people to benefit. Right. Uh, let's hear from Bonner. Mr. Bell, my um, uh, last comment would be on physical activity. Let's have our children out there. Uh, we should stop this habit of having primary schools on the fourth floor of a commercial building. Mm -hmm. There must be playing grounds. The school timetable must provide for physical education so that these children are out there. When the children play, when they run, they develop strength in their muscles. And in turn, we avoid getting most of these problems that we get. It's wrong to have an obese child.